Hey guys, my name is Alex Telford and today I'm going to be showing you a new script that I've created. This is one that I did demonstrate a little while ago called the Trim Curves Utility. Now I have made a few changes since then and I've improved it. There is still a couple of little bugs but because I am about to be starting working anywhere up to 120 hours a week I really don't have time to finish this script. So I'm going to give it out to the community, you guys can feel free to edit it, use it how you like, offer any suggestions for when I do have time. And yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. So this script here works on any mesh. It's designed to work in sculpt mode or object mode or even edit mode. You can do whatever you like. And it's mainly designed for the dynamic topology. Because this works off a basis of working with booleans, it does leave a bit of a weird edge. So I'm going to go through and demonstrate a couple of the features that I've got. I'm going to be doing this in object mode but I have set it up so that you can return to sculpt mode if you use this in sculpt mode and it, it will just work to not break your flow. So first thing we need to do is we need to specify a curve type. Now you can use a curve which will give you an option to specify any um, Bezier or NURBS curve in there or you can use a grease pencil. Most of the time I find I use the grease pencil. You need to specify the object that you want to use. You do have an option here for sight click. Now what sight click will do is it will work to trim holes in your mesh and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. And you've got a bunch of settings. So let's just go ahead and see how this works. So if I just click out to the side there and I just draw a line. Now I have, you notice how my uh, line here is very faceted. I have done this on purpose. If we go into our user preferences and uh, under editing, we have this grease pencil. Now I've set this, these a little bit higher and simplify stroke and smooth stroke enabled just so that we get a much, um, we get less topology in here to work with. We can always smooth it out, but it's much easier to, sm to smooth out topology that hasn't got much there to begin with than one that's really, really dense. Okay, so once we've got that set, what we can do is we can make sure we just return to objects because I'm not sculpting at the moment. And we hit trim curve. And it will go ahead and it will trim right through that curve. Which is great. And you can see here the topology that it leaves us with. So it does have this weird stuff around the edges, but it does have divisions here. So these divisions work quite well. So if I just come back to, to here, we can change this division spacing. If I put this to something like 0.1, and we've got trim curve, notice it takes a little longer, but we get much more cuts. And of course, the um, the cuts the other way, that's specified by, once again, that user pre preferences. So this axis is defined by how dense your curve is. The other one is just defined by your division spacing. All right, so let's undo that. Let's take a look at what else we've got. So I'm just going to put this back up to 0.5, since you know what that does now. The depth cut, this one here will change how deep it will cut. So if we had this something at 0.5 and we did a trim curve, notice it will just trim a slice out of it at 0.5 blend units. So in the last instance of this, um, in the last demo, you saw that it was very random at which what depth was taken at. This is because I was taking it from the view and now I'm working with matrices so that it works a little bit nicer and we can actually know what these values are going to be. The extrusion depth, this one here, is how deep it will go away from the cursor to um, wherever it's going. If we set this to something like 0.2 and we trim that, you can see what we get there. So we can combine these. If I had this set to 0.2 and we had the depth cut set to 0.2, we can actually go ahead and we can cut a little, just a little trim right through there. And that can be used for cutting um, paths through objects and stuff, such like that. Okay, so a few other options we have here. We have this, we can set this to X. If I set this back to 5, 5 and 5, we can go ahead and cut this. Now, if it, if it does disappear, we have this reverse depth option, which can fix that, like so. And this here will just cut straight along the X axis. So if I go ahead and clear out my grease pencil, and we just go something like this. We can trim, and you can see how that's working there. So it's only taking a cut of 0.2, that's why it's done a hole there. Just set it to 5, and we'll go trim, and it will do this. Now we can go in the other direction as well. So if I undo that, move this, and 
to the same line. If we just go reverse direction, we can trim in the opposite axis, so it will, it will just trim the opposite. We can reverse the trim if we like, and you can see how that's working there. We can reverse the direction and the trim, and it will cut that way. So you can play around with the different settings. It's not the most straightforward process at the moment, but it's certainly getting there. Okay, so you've also got the uh, Y if you want to cut up and down, that's fine. The rest of these are going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, the other one is this Apply Boolean. If you uncheck Apply Boolean, it will actually show you the Boolean object that gets generated. So if we set this back to 3D Cursor, and I go ahead and draw a line, and that's coming out from the 3D Cursor, which is over there. We go ahead and click Trim Curve. You can see the object that gets created. So this is just a really big object created on the direction of your view at the axis away from the 3D cursor. So before it was scaling away, that's why it got bigger and bigger. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm just translating based on the matrix between these two. So if we undo that, so we can go ahead and show the boolean. If we show the reverse depth option, what this one here does is it's just there to fix a bug. It will change the direction at which this goes away from the point. So sometimes it'll go the wrong way and that's what the reverse depth does. Let's take a look, which apply boolean, set this to cyclic. This is something kind of cool. Now cyclic is not based on the uh, 3D cursor X or Y. What it does is it just trims a hole. So if we go ahead and go something like this, we go trim curve, we can just cut a hole straight through. We can also go the other way, like that. You can go ahead and carve whatever you like. So if we did some unusual shape we can take this depth cut right down to a point, point 0.15 or something like that make sure to take your division spacing down as well otherwise it'll just go to what the division spacing is All right, so it'll create a little object now you can see here that it's not um, it's not quite close enough to the model we can just manually come in and place it a little closer so I made, made sure that these objects you can just place in when you like come in and apply that modifier delete the object and we get a boolean. So if you didn't draw your curve close enough, you can go ahead and just move around the object, or you can redraw your curve. Okay, the final option I'm going to show you guys is the curve option. So if we go ahead and add in a circle, now this doesn't have to be a circle, you can, um, because the grease pencil is just converted to a curve anyways, you can do what you like. So I'm just going to come up here, I'm going to go ahead and set this to a curve. Select our sphere, select our Bezier circle, um, check cyclic, if you, don't select, if you don't select cyclic, it's just going to start taking the 3D cursor location and projecting this outwards, which has some weird results. M might be what you want, if you're not working with the circle, it's definitely what you want. Depth cut, let's just make that 5, and if we just come down here, we'll apply boolean, uncheck reverse trim, and click trim curve. Cool. Alright, so I just went ahead and checked Apply Boolean and Reverse Depth, and that one there um, got it the right way around. So you can see how this one's a little more dense. Now that was because of our curve settings. It was uh, when you create a curve, you can see we've only got four points, but in here we have a resolution of 12. If you take that down to 1, you'll get the, the square, but if not, it will just take whatever the resolution you have set, which is why we get it nice and dense. Once again, you can go ahead and up your division spacings and that there will work for you. So that is it. I hope you enjoy this add-on. It's, as I said, this is still a beta. It has some bugs. I have these reverse options down here, which will help to, um, help to negate some of those bugs. But if anyone has a fix for anything, anyone has suggestions, by all means, let me know and I will do my best to fix this for you. So that is it for the Trim Curves Utility, there will be a download link somewhere near the video, and yeah, my name is Alex Tilford, have a nice day.